Hello, hello, my name is Marsha Knotts and welcome to another Not With Me. If this is your first Not With Me video, then be warned that this isn't a tutorial. It's just a video where I'm making a bracelet. I filmed the entire thing from start to finish and I'm sharing it with you guys as a time lapse. I like to use these as a chance for us to catch up and talk about whatever I feel like talking about at the time. Today I'm making a beautiful sparkly gems alpha bracelet. I actually haven't made an alpha bracelet in a really long time and so I really wanted to make this. Uh, it's been on my to-dos for a while. I also just generally really like gems. You might know that if you follow my Instagram for a while. I like to take uh, pictures of a lot of my bracelets on gems. I have quite an extensive gem collection of like different like amethysts and you know quartz whatever I'm not actually I don't actually know what they are I just think they look pretty and I get whatever I find pretty at the time and so they they usually live on my bookshelf um you usually can see them in the background of my videos when I'm filming with my face in it <laughs> uh, and I like to take pictures against gems and so when I saw this pattern for friendship bracelets I knew that I had to make that as well because I thought it would be quite funny to make a bracelet with gems and then take a picture of it against gems. So I hope you appreciate that. I thought it was quite cool. <laughs> uh, it was difficult picking out the colors for this one actually. I picked it out in um, one of my latest vlogs. I like to I like to make bracelets, at least like start bracelets with you uh, in vlogs occasionally and this was, uh, this was one of them. And it was quite difficult to pick out the colors for this one because like you really especially when there's like multiple shades of the same color because there's two purples, there's two blues, and there's two pinks. Uh, you want them to be different enough for them to stand out, but you also want them to be like similar enough that it, you can tell that it's a shade of the color, if that makes sense, you know? Um, so I find this kind of color choice to be quite challenging generally, but I think it worked really well here. And yeah, it was very much a challenge to make. I am not going to lie to you. It was difficult. Um, there were a lot of colors going on and there was just a lot of color switching. There's a lot of strings to keep track of um, and it, it was a bit of a mess, but I actually, I film for Instagram stories quite a bit and I try to like capture some behind the scenes moments of, you know, little everyday bits of how I'm making my bracelets and uh, just to share with you guys. And I uh, was filming myself as I was cutting the strings at the back just to clean it up because whenever you replace strings or you add new strings, there's always like a little tail uh, at the back and then, you know, you cut them off, you make it a little bit cleaner, make it a little bit easier to work with. So I was uh, filming myself as I was cutting the strings at the back and <laughs> accidentally cut off two of the strings that I needed, which was really annoying. Um, it's fine, like you can always add them back in. It's not really that big of a deal, but well, I mean, it was just annoying that it happened and then I did have to add them back in. But not only that, it was specifically these two blue strings, the light blue and the dark blue string. I cut it off uh, back so further on, but it was specifically annoying with these because you have this beginning bit, which I'm making now uh, in, in the video, uh, where you know, there's a blue and dark blue in the bracelet, but then further on it kind of goes away. We transition into pink and then the blue comes back later. And when it comes back, it comes back as an edge string for both of the colors. It comes back on the edge first. And so you have to introduce a new string on the edge. And if you've made alpha bracelets before, you know that introducing new strings on the edge is a pain because that little tail that I was talking about that you like cut off at the end, it's really difficult to cut that off at the edge. When I'm replacing strings, I really try to replace strings at least a few strings in and away from the edge, just so that it's easier to kind of, you know, cut that tail off and so it doesn't stick out from the side of the bracelet. So top tip, try to not <laughs> switch strings or um, add new strings at the edge because it's very annoying. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. It ended up working out, it ended up being fine. Um, but yeah, I started watching a new TV show while I was making this bracelet actually. I, if you know, you, you, you've heard me talk about if you've been following for a while and watching my vlogs specifically, cause that's mostly where I talk about this kind of stuff. But I've mostly stopped watching television really. Uh, I used to watch it a lot. I used to watch TV shows as my main source of entertainment. I used to, um, watch TV shows and make bracelets together specifically. Um, that was kind of, well, because you know, you're making a bracelet, you need to occupy yourself with something. And then also if I'm watching a TV show, I don't want to just watch a TV show. I need to occupy myself with something. And so I start making bracelets. It's kind of actually how I started making bracelets in the first place. I watched a lot of TV shows, uh, specifically growing up. It was like Doctor Who or whatever. I don't know. 
Um, and I needed something to occupy myself with, uh, with my hands because I like to fidget and I like to do things. I can't just sit down and watch a TV show. That's like completely impossible for me. I very much have ADHD if that was not obvious by that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I actually got into bracelets originally. Well, not, not originally, originally, originally my friend told me, but I got like really into it, um, specifically because of that. But then, uh, I started of started transitioning out of that. I don't know, I, I stopped watching TV shows uh, a few years ago when I started reading more books. I read books for entertainment a lot and I specifically like read, you know, science fiction and fantasy or whatever. And I just kind of stopped watching shows at all because I think I got really frustrated with a lot of different TV shows uh, just completely abandoning plot lines that I cared about. And just, you know, I feel like we can all relate to this, but you know, there are certain TV shows and I've, you know, unfortunately happened across quite a few of them where they start off really good. They have a really interesting hook, a really interesting premise. You get really into it. You get really invested in the characters and the world. You love this show. You're interested in where all these like storylines are going, these like mysteries or whatever. And then they just um, don't go anywhere and it declines in quality. The show gets like 10 seasons or whatever and it, just, it declines in quality and it doesn't, some plot lines are just dropped. Characters make no sense anymore. They just so completely out of character from what they were. And it just frustrated me to no end to the point where I, I didn't even want to start watching new TV shows because of that. It really, really frustrated me. And I found that that's not really an issue with books. Like I still really enjoy stories and it's not really that big of an issue with books because you kind of like, with the nature of a book, you have to finish it once you've started it <laughs> because it is one singular piece. And even if it's part of a series, it's still like oftentimes holds quality better than TV shows do. And I think that was kind of like one of the main reasons why I ended up transitioning away from TV shows and just reading books for entertainment now. And so people ask me like, oh, how much, how do you have time in the day to read like 60 books a year? And well, first of all, audiobooks, like 30% of that is audiobooks. But second of all, yeah, I just, I don't watch TV anymore. And I just, whatever time I used to spend watching TV shows, I now read books for that instead. Anyway, point is, when I was making this bracelet, I actually started a new TV show, which I haven't done in a while. Uh, the only TV shows that I'm currently like actively watching slash waiting for is Bridgerton and House of the Dragon season two. Like those are the two that I actually watch <laughs> but i say watch that's what like six episodes of each of them every what three or four years <laughs> so that's a very vague statement anyway i started watching new girl um so i'm actually quite enjoying that i'm about what a third of the way through season one which is all that i watched when i was doing this i think this bracelet took me about three and a half hours i think to make um not consecutively i didn't do it in one go very much not i did this over a week i think um but yeah, I, I watched New Girl uh, while I was making it and I'm quite enjoying that. Please don't tell me, <laughs> or maybe do, I don't know. Please don't tell me that it declines in quality and it's like horrible by season 10. I mean, I kind of, I'm assuming that it will be just because, I don't know, it probably will. But I'm enjoying it so far. I'm not like that invested into it emotionally. So maybe I won't get too disappointed when it eventually declines in quality and ends up being you know, what I am trying to avoid with TV shows. <laughs> but it kept me entertained while I was making this bracelet and um, I'm probably gonna continue watching it, it was quite fun. Um, so yeah, I, I like this bracelet a lot. I think it's turning out really, really well. It turned out a little bit wonky in some areas, which I found a bit annoying. Um, it can be like that, especially when there's a lot of different colors. Uh, when there's a lot of different colors, you're making a lot of color switches, it can be difficult to kind of make it all even and make it, oh, there we cleaned it up a little bit, beautiful. Um, make it all kind of the width of the bracelet is, is more of an issue here. Not so much even the rows, it's more about the width. Like when there's a lot of string, it kind of gets pushed out a little bit more. When there's less strings, um, it kind of, you know, shrinks a little bit because there's more tension with that one string, nothing's pushing it out. So I, I find that to be quite challenging. Um, I did clean it up a little bit on the back after I finished making it, I kind of cut some strings that were maybe pulling a little bit too tightly and then I tried to, um, you know, grab it, literally just like grab it with my fingers on the edges and pull it a little bit where uh, it's a little bit too tight and then maybe push it in where it's, you know, being a little bit too big and just kind of generally even it out um, with my fingers by like pushing and pulling it. And I feel like that did help a little bit. It is a little bit um, neater than it was when I first started it. And sorry, when I first finished it. So yeah, top tip, maybe try that if, um, 
if you're having issues with uh, width and stuff. But yeah, I haven't made an alpha bracelet in a while. I was also uh, recently going through my collection in general, because um, I'm starting to wear my bracelets out more, which is really exciting. I'm gonna wear this one out as well. Uh, I've been doing a whole thing where I'm wearing my bracelets out more. It's been really, really fun. I've been getting so many compliments on them and I've been enjoying it a lot. I'm trying to like match the bracelet that I'm wearing to uh, the like, event or whatever I'm going to and also to my outfit or whatever it's been fun um but yeah I was going through my collection I actually found a bunch of wall hangings and then maybe I maybe I need to make an, a wall hanging I haven't made alpha bracelets in general in a while so this was already really fun uh but also I haven't made wall hangings specifically in a really long time so I think that might be something that I want to get back into but yeah uh here's how the bracelet turned out I think it's really really pretty I'm glad I made it it's uh, been sitting on my to-dos for a while so it's finally been created um, for you guys to enjoy. And I hope you did enjoy. Um, the pattern is linked in the description as always. If you also wanna make Chris bracelet, I would love to see your guys' creations. So make sure to tag me on Instagram or send it uh, through Discord if you want to. The link to the Discord is also in the description. And um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Before I go, I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters. It is with your support that I'm able to create the videos that I do on this channel. If you also want to become a supporter of the channel, the link to my Patreon is in the description. There is also a separate Discord uh, for patrons and we do special challenges and stuff on there. So that could be quite fun if you'd like to join that as well. My book, The Beginner's Guide to Friendship Bracelets is now out. It is a photo tutorial book aimed at beginners and it takes you from the basics to the more advanced stuff. It's available for purchase anyway, you typically buy books. And there's also a direct link in the description if you want to use that. But in any case, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I enjoyed hanging out with you. I always imagine that you guys are making bracelets with me when you're watching these not with me's and I hope you are. And so send me pictures on Instagram if you do. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video, which is gonna be a really fun tutorial that I've already filmed. So yeah, <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.